The scientific evidence suggests that hormone replacement therapy or HRT can be very beneficial in alleviating vasomotor symptoms in women going through the menopause transition, including perimenopause. HRT is also used to treat medical conditions like primary ovarian failure and certain HRT combination products are also beneficial for prevention of postmenopausal osteoporosis. But even with all the benefits, there are still many lingering questions and concerns about HRT from both the medical and consumer side of the spectrum. You may be familiar with the WHI or the Women's Health Initiative Study. This is a long-term national health study that focuses on strategies for preventing heart disease, breast and colorectal cancer, as well as osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. In a nutshell, the findings of this study back in 2002, they were published, all but halted the use of HRT, and it's resulted in a 70 to 80 percent decline in the use of HRT. So millions of women who could have benefited from hormone replacement therapy didn't. But today I'm going to talk about why doctors still aren't prescribing hormones for perimenopausal and menopausal women. So I'll break this down into four main categories. The first is to describe the rules set forth by the regulatory authorities, such as the Food and Drug Administration in the United States. Because I live in the United States and understand their rules better, I will refer only to the FDA guidelines. The second is to discuss the accessibility of HRT, including your place of residence or where you live or your health insurance. So the third on the list are personal reasons of why a woman would, would not want to take hormone replacement therapy. It could be that she doesn't like taking prescription medication or she prefers a specific route of taking the medication because, you know, there are multiple ways you can take hormone replacement therapy. And fourth on the list is health literacy reasons. So without further delay, let's jump into it. So one of the first reasons and a very significant reason why doctors won't prescribe HRT to perimenopausal or even menopausal women, is that a woman may not qualify based on the indication or the contraindication. So hormone replacement therapy is only indicated to treat symptoms of menopause. For example, chimera or estradiol patch is indicated for the treatment of moderate to severe vasomotor symptoms due to menopause. It's also used to treat moderate to severe symptoms of vulvar or vaginal atrophy due to menopause. It's also used to treat hypoestrogenism due to hypogonadism, castration, or primary ovarian failure, and the prevention of postmenopausal osteoporosis. While estrace, which comes in a pill or vaginal cream, is estradiol, it is used or is indicated in the treatment of moderate to severe symptoms of vulvar or vaginal atrophy due to menopause. Women can be prescribed estrogen or estrogen with progestin if you still have a uterus. If you're still actively having a period but experience menopausal symptoms, then you are likely considered perimenopausal. For contraindications, the FDA clearly states that if you have the following conditions, then you should not take hormone therapy. So if you have problems with vaginal bleeding, you have or have had certain cancers such as breast cancer or uterine cancer, you have had or do you have, you know, are known to have blood clots, stroke, or heart attack? Any history of that will exclude you. You have a bleeding disorder, you have liver disease, or you have an allergic reaction to hormone medicine. Now, some of you may understand that all HRT comes with a black box warning for endometrial cancer, cardiovascular disorders, and probable dementia. Some physicians are stringent about sticking to these guidelines. And in those situations, it's really encouraged for women to understand their health history, not just shopping around from doctor to doctor, but understand your health history, understand any past medical conditions that you've experienced, that haven't resolved themselves, if you have past experience with hormone therapy, how did you react to that? All of these factor into whether or not your doctor is going to be able to prescribe you hormone replacement therapy. Second on the list is accessibility. Now, when I talk about accessibility, for example, I'm talking about health insurance. You know, not all health insurance covers hormone replacement therapy or the coverage that the health plans do have, they have very strict guidelines around who can take HRT. So some health plans may not cover the patch, so they end up not taking any type of hormone therapy. Some women prefer patch or the pill, but like I said before, accessibility is a big concern. And then again, if there are strict access checkpoints put into place, namely a prior authorization edit, 
then a woman has to go through a process to ensure that she qualifies. And if her doctor doesn't see her as a good candidate, then she won't be able to get hormone replacement therapy. Another issue with accessibility is that you live in a part of the world where physicians may not use hormone replacement therapy to treat perimenopausal or menopausal women. Well, I've read some positive stories about HRT you know, being used in South Africa for the prevention of menopausal induced osteoporosis. This is not the norm. There is much controversy around whether a natural process like menopause should be treated. And then there is still much more education needed for providers and patients. In the United States, black women aren't treated nearly as often for menopausal symptoms as white women. In 2022, a report from the University of Chicago Medicine stated that black women don't take HRT as often because of unconscious racial biases, where physicians don't think that black women or black women, the symptoms of black women aren't as serious or as comfortable as they say they are. In addition to health insurance, formulary limitations, and provider bias, there's also the issue of women who are homeless or incarcerated. In 2022, an article in Menopause concluded that individuals going through menopause transition while experiencing incarceration have significant unmet needs and poor access to medication interventions. Third on the list is personal reasons. Now, there are some women who don't like to take prescription medication at all. They could have had a poor experience in the past or maybe they've even tried hormone replacement therapy and didn't have the outcome that they were expecting. In a 2010 study of women across several Asian countries, only 19% of women took HRT to manage their menopause symptoms, while 37% use herbal or natural remedies. And in China, it's um, thought that HRT use could be as low as 2.1%. Now, the Maori, North American Indian, and also indigenous Australian women were also said to use HRT less than white American counterparts. But more research was needed to determine if the cause of this lack of use was cultural or lack of health literacy, which leads us into our fourth and final reason for today, and that is making decisions based on a lack of knowledge in education or a vast amount of knowledge and education. Two sides of the same coin, right? So some of us might believe that the risk outweighs the benefit of taking HRT and therefore decide to pursue herbal and supplemental therapies. We may even decide to alter our diet to increase more soy-based products. It's important for us women to do some digging and some research on menopause, reading books and guides and guidelines, finding out through sites like the FDA, figuring out what our ancestors or those of our counterparts have done in the past to combat vital motor symptoms of, of menopause. And remember that the knowledge that is available to us, it must be siphoned through. However, our body and our health needs it. So I'm encouraging all of you watching, if you're experiencing uh, the menopausal transition symptoms, either you're perimenopausal or menopausal, or even postmenopausal, is to do your research, to do your best to try and understand the available products that are out there that can help you alleviate your symptoms, either they be prescription supplements and botanical products or herbs as well as over-the-counter products that are available to you. So I do encourage you to spend your time to do a little bit of digging, a little bit of research. Don't be, you know, throw it in the comments if you have a question. I do hope this video has been helpful and beneficial for you. I'm working on some really interesting topics as it relates to menopause. So please stick around for the journey. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.